Hello everyone, uh, welcome to part 4 of topic 5 Topic 5 about knowledge, reasoning, inference and uncertainties We presented before 3 parts where we introduced some basics of like reasoning and also probability theory And uh, today we are um, uh, presenting uh, the conditional probability and uh, it is derivation of Bayesian theorem. Um, I may say that the conditional probability and Bayesian theorem is uh, the most important uh, result of probability theory in the applications of estimation theory and the uh, 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 system identification, um, machine learning, and uh, also statistical uh, inference or probabilistic inference. So Bayesian theorem is the uh, foundation actually of many, many applications in different areas. So this is very or extremely important to understand. We don't need to, uh, at least uh, for this basic course, we don't need to go uh, too deep in these uh, like theorems or in, in the analytical analysis of these theorems, but at least we should understand what they mean and how could be used to uh, like build our uh, uh, conclusion or, or our knowledge based on um, uh, observations. Okay, let us start. This is uh, uh, we go now to the to the slide where we have introduced in the last. Uh, lecture. It was the last slide uh, in the last uh, part is the conditional probability. Yes, so this is the conditional uh, probability the, uh, uh, equation. Before we uh, start uh, talking about this formula, this basic formula, what it means or what is the conditional probability? Actually, many things around us when we, we, when we study uh, um, uh, any behavior or any system, uh, usually this system of behavior is not independent from, in, from the surrounding or from other like uh, artifacts of, or from other attributes. So things are uh, correlated, things are dependent. So we need to know that, for example, the relation or the conditions or the um, dependency the, the, uh, of, of some item based on other item. Okay, uh, let us have a, a simple example. So um, uh, assume that, um, I will take simple examples actually from industry or from health system to make things easier to understand. So uh, if we assume that in, in certain country that um, the probability uh, of a certain person to have diabetes, diabetes to be diabetic is, uh, let's say, 0.01. So it means that 1% of population in this country, they have diabetic or they are diabetic. Okay, now um, it is 1%. This is the probability of, uh, let us do it in this way. So th this is the probability. Okay, I may just make this one. Yes. So this is the probability of being of being diabetic. Okay, is equal to 0.01. What that mean? It means that if you um, uh, take any random sample from this population, that uh, to, to be this person to be diabetic, it will be 0.01. Okay, now, um, of course, um, what if you have more observation? How this observation will affect your uncertainty uh, like a percentage? Uh, what I mean, um, assume that uh, uh, A is the age of uh, the person. So now, uh, what is the probability of being diabetic given that uh, the age of this person that you the, the random sample that you take you take someone and you found that uh, his or her age was let's say let's say uh, 80 years okay so now how this in your observation will affect your belief or your uncertainty in the diabetic of or, or the uh, probability of, of this person to be diabetic or not Okay, so now th this point oh one is the general. So this is the probability without taking into account the age. But now when we bought other event, 
what is this slash mean given it means that given so you take one sample one person that just you select from some some like from street in some country and then you ask it him or her what is your age then he or she told you eight years old okay based on this new observation now how this probability of being diabetic will be changed is it the same or it will be increased or decreased so now the age the the, the, the diabetic being diabetic or not de depends on the age okay depends on the age okay now we can add some more information not only a what is the probability of being diabetic given that the person has certain age a but also the uh, let's say uh, uh is he or she exercising or not? So we call it like physical activity. So if we put physical activity like C, for example. So what we mean by C is the physical activity. Let's say that if the person is very active, we put C equal to one. And if he's not active, we put it zero and then in between. So now, uh, what is the probability of being diabetic given that A and C? So now this will, will, will change or will affect the probability. Things are correlated in this way. Things are like uh, dependent to each other in some somehow. Um, many times we don't know uh, this relation mathematically. I mean, uh, we cannot build like uh, analytical equation or deterministic equation told us exactly if this person with these uh, uh, parameters will have diabetic or not, but will be diabetic or not. But we can at least uh, have or uh, increase our conclusion or increase our belief in, in, this, in this conclusion or decrease it. Okay, this is very important, and I, I'm going to talk more and more about this in this uh, 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 part. So it, it, this is actually the key of the statistical uh, inference, and this is also the key to the um, machine learning. Many machine learning algorithms are based on uh, these concepts. Okay, so after this simple uh, example, let us see to this equation. So the equation here says that the probability, the probability of uh, uh, event B to occur or not, given that another event A has occurred. So A has already. So you you have been informed that there is new information is A. How that the occurrence of A will affect your belief or disbelief in B that B will occur. Okay, this equal to the probability of A and B together, A and B, that they are the intersection between A and B divided by the probability of A. Okay, here it is it, it is clear that A must must not be impossible because if a is if the occurrence of a is impossible it means that the probability of a equal to zero if the probability of a equal to zero of course this will be none a number because you divide any number by 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 zero is a none a number and it is actually very logical because here we say that conditioned at a has occurred so it means that the probability of a is not zero okay uh, now we have this formula. This formula actually it came from, or we we, we will uh, in the next slide I will show that simple like uh, uh, um, uh, intuitive way to to explain how how we compute this this or or from where this algorithm came from using Venn diagram. But um, I like to repeat this uh, con this uh, uh, the meaning of this equation because it's very important this is the base of what is coming so the probability of any event b to occur given that a has already occurred this will affect the probability of b that will be probability of a and b divided by probability of a okay now let us go to the uh, next slide so you can see here that uh, if we have two events a and b Okay, what is the probability? What is the probability that uh, uh, of B probability of B given A? They said that the probability of B given A A has occurred. This this blue circle has occurred already. So what is the probability that B has occurred as well? So this probability is the is is the relation that this is the probability of A 
and B divided by the probability of, of A. It is like, uh, you can imagine about it like, like areas. So what is the, uh, 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 if you, for example, uh, drop one point, what is the probability that it will come over A and B? So it will be this, the area of A and B divided by the area of A. So this is just intuitive, simple description about this equation from it, it, it from where it came. But uh, it is more important not to know from where it came, but how to use it and how to resolve our our like uncertainty problem is using this this formula. Okay. So now let us talk a little bit about this conditional probability. So if I just open uh, a note here, so we can talk more. So um, if I ask it a question now, um, if A and B, so probability of B given A, if I ask it you question now, and please just concentrate with me about this. If I ask it you, uh, what is the probability of B given that A has occurred already if A and B are independent? If A and B are independent. Okay. So, of course, we have some events. They are clearly independent to each other. And there are some events. It is hard to say that if they are independent or not. So we need to make some tests. But now, assume that we have two completely different events. One event happened, for example, in your home, and based on that, and you will open that TV, you find that it was raining in some other country. So it is not related at all between what happened at your home and what happened in the other, that country of raining or storm or whatever. Okay, now, um, the probability of P given A, what it will be if A and B, if A and B are independent. Independent to each other. What do you think? What will be probability of B given A? Yeah, no, no. Uh, uh, it, it looks that I heard someone say zero. It cannot be zero. It cannot be zero because zero, what, what, what zero means? Zero means that probability of B given A equal to zero. It means that if A has occurred, B will never be occurred. Okay, so they are dependent in this case. In this case, they are dependent. This case is called mutually exclusive. Because if A has occurred, then B will not occur. So it cannot be zero. It cannot be zero if A and B are independent. Actually, if A and B are independent, probability of B given A must be probability of B. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. A has occurred or not occurred, B will have it is on uncertainty. It is uncertainty or our belief in it is uncertainty will not change if A has occurred or not. So probability of B given A is the same as probability of B if A and B are independent. Okay, remember this. This is important. Actually, mutually exclusive, actually, uh, uh, we cannot say that they are independent. They are dependent because um, uh, uh, what is the probability that to get head, given that you get tail, it will be zero because you, you already get tail. So uh, the occurrence of one depends on the occurrence of the other. So they will affect each other. So cannot be cannot be like zero. Okay, now this is the probability of P given A equal to probability of P. Now, if we came back to the same equation that we saw before, probability of P given A equal to probability of A and B divided by probability of A. And now we said that if A and B are independent, okay, in this case, probability of P given A equal to probability of P, as I explained now, it means that probability of A and B equal to probability of A times probability of B if A if A and B are independent. So remember this, this is very important. If A and B are independent, then the probability of A and B equal to probability of A times probability of B. Okay, but what happens if probability of A and B are dependent? If A and B are dependent. What is the probability of A and B? Of course, we can 
just deduce this one from the original equation, from this one. So it will be probability of A and B equal to, be, equal to probability of B given A times probability of A. So this will be probability of B given A times probability of A. Okay? And actually it is the same if you said that probability of uh, A given B, just you exchange the order. So what is the probability of A given B equal to probability of A and B because probability of A and B is the same as probability of B and A. Okay? But here we, we divide by probability of B. Okay? Which means that probability of A and B is also probability of A given B times probability of B. So it, it, it is the same. So probability of A and B equal to probability of A given B times probability of B. And it is the same equal to probability of B given A times probability of A. So they are the same this way. This is important when we make or we, we, when we deduce the, the uh, Bayesian theorem. Okay. Um, let us close this one. And now we go back to, the, to this uh, uh, slide. And uh, yeah, so, um, but if A and B equal to phi, it means that th they are mutually exclusive. And in that case, probability of B given A equal to zero, as I explained now. Uh, if A is implied in B, then the probability of B given A, of course, equal to one. But it is not necessary that the reverse is always correct. So it is not necessary that if probability of B given A equal to one, it means that probability of A given B equal to one. No, it is not. And we will see this in some like simple examples. Okay. Yes. Here we have a few examples that you can find them in, in, in the slides. So we said here, a dark bag contains two balls, okay? White and or black. We don't know them. We, we know that they are white or black, but we don't know if both are white or both are black or white and black. So we have no idea about the, what is there. Our uncertainty is maximum. What is meaning of maximum? It means that the probability of each co color is 0 0.5. This, this is the maximum like uncertainty, okay? Because it is between zero and between zero up to one. So if it is one, then it is deterministic. You are sure 100% about it. If it is zero, it is also deterministic because you are 100% it will not occur. So the maximum is in between. So it, it is at 0.5, okay? Now, uh, what is the probability that both balls are black? What is the probability that at least there is one white uh, ball. If you have been informed, now remember, so you, you can see that things are uh, in probabilities, there are some tricks actually, depends how you present uh, the, the question. So if you have been informed that at least one ball is white, what is the probability that both are white? Then if you draw one of the balls and it was white, Okay, what is the probability that the other ball is white as well? Okay, so now maybe be, some people can see that three and four should have the same answer. Me. Okay, so some people, they, they might think that if three and four, they should have the same answer because the first one, they say that if you have been informed that, that at least one ball is white, Okay, what is the probability that both are white? And now uh, you draw one ball and you find that it is white. What is the probability that the second ball is white? Let us see uh, what, uh, uh, how to find the result of this example. Okay. Now you can actually build this, uh, uh, the, the uh, sample space that we have here. So we have ball one and ball two. So what is inside the bag can be white, white, can be white ball, can be white, black, sorry, can be black, white, and can be black, black. So this is all possibilities. So this is the sample space that we have in this, uh, in this example. So the sample space, you can say that is equal to like white, 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 black, and so on until black, black. Okay. The, um, the probability of each one, of course, will be one over four. Why? Because we have four events and all of them, they are equally likely. We have 
maximum uncertainty about them equally likely then the probability of being white white you could will be one over four one over four one over four one over four because the summation must be one okay now the first question it was the asking what is the probability that black black uh, what is the probability that both they are black then of course it will be simply one over four what is the probability that both are white it will be simply one over four now if i if i ask it what is what is the probability now the second question let us go back to the second question to see what it was so what is the probability that at least there is one white ball what is the probability that at least we have one white ball now what what, what, what i am saying here that we defined a new event i call it here e okay and e is uh, the uh, uh, is the event at least one white at least one white what is the probability that you have at least one white you count how many events or how many outcomes that you have at least one white this one two three so we have three possibilities that we have one white then the the, the probability of at least one white will be three divided by four because everyone is fourth 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 so this probability will be three divided by four so your uncertainty about that this bag will have at least one ball white will be like 0.75 okay now the third question it was what is the probability that both are white 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 given that at least one of them is white at least so you have been informed that at least is already white what is the probability that both of them they will be white and white okay so this could be computed in this way so we we apply the equation of the conditional probability so this is white and white so it will be probability of white and white event and e what is e e is at least one is white divided by the probability the probability of uh, uh, getting like at least is white so actually this equation is is the same as the previous conditional of probability okay now what is the probability of getting white white given at least one of is was white okay let me now use this notes again okay Okay, maybe I just yeah. So probability of getting white white. Okay, given and 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 uh, uh, to be in the same time and to be also uh, uh, at least one of them is white. This is what we 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 are looking to find. This actually we can find it from the equation that it will be probability of at least one white given that we have white white okay times a probability of having white white isn't it uh, um, i just applied the 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 conditional probability the conditional probability that e given white white equal to probability of e and white white divided by probability of white white so this is and this this will be just we make the cross and then probability of e and white white is the same as probability of e is means e means that at least one of them is white and times white white and of course it can be also find directly from the sample space but i like to you how to think in algorithmic way okay now this uh, when we multiply them okay so the probability of e given as white white what is the probability what is the probability that at least one is white given that both are white white of course this probability is one this probability is one because e implies in this ww okay so ww already part of e because e means that at least one ball is white and the probability of white white given that they are white white so this probability equal to one times 
probability of white white we have already calculated them it was one over four one over four okay now let us close this one so this will be one as you can see it here okay this will be one times probability of white white is will be 0.25 divided by probability of e probability of at least one ball is white we calculated it already three over four then this probability will be one over three it will be one over three so uh, the probability uh, of getting white white ball if you have been informed that at least one ball was white is one over three why why this came why this result came like this one why it is not half this is this the, the result obtained by applying the conditional probability but let us look to this sample space luckily in this example it is the simplest example that we can see that we can apply conditional probability so it is easier also to like um, justify the algorithmic result by, by looking to the looking to the uh, to the table. So now, the, what is the probability that at least uh, what is the probability that you will have white white given at least that you have one white? Which one? It will be the first three. So the first three is our new sample space now because uh, those first three they have at least one white. This this one or this one or this one. This one that we we will cross it because uh, both are black. Then, what is the probability that of having white white out of this new sample space? It will be one divided by three. So this satisfy the algorithmic result. But remember that now we are looking this to, to, to the uh, to the uh, to the sample space, and we could prove it based on that. However, we have much complicated problems. It can be very very complicated to approve them from the sample space. Okay, in that case, we apply and we rely on the conditional algorithms or conditional probability algorithms as far as uh, uh, you use it correctly. Okay, now look to the fourth, uh, fourth problem. Fourth problem, they say that if you draw one of the poles and it was white, you draw it already. Okay, what is the probability that the other pole is white as well? So you can see now, it is a little bit tricky here. It is not the same as in number three. Okay, even in number three, you have been informed. You didn't draw it, but you have been informed that there is one, at least one white. But here, you have drawn it and you find that it is white. What is the probability that the other ball inside the bag that you didn't see it yet, that it is white as well? Okay, now let us apply the algorithm again. So the algorithm here, I defined another um, uh, like uh, set for, uh, or another parameter C that is the set of or the event that the drone ball is white. The drone ball is white. Now, what is the probability that you have? You have white, white, given that C, given that the drone ball is white. So this will be the probability of C given W, W times probability of W, W. Uh, maybe some of you is that it, it might be good just to uh, but actually from where we bring this one because this is what we need actually in the next slide the Bayesian uh, formula okay let me explain this in a note like this so remember probability of a given b any a and b equal to we said that probability of a and b divided by probability of b if you remember that, I said that also probability of A, uh, 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 so here we say that B given A equal to the same probability of A and B divided by probability of A. Okay, from this formula, now by crossing, that probability of A and B equal to probability of B given A times probability of A. If you substitute this above in the first, in first equation, you get that probability of A given B equal to probability of B given A. You can see that you exchange the order times the probability of A divided by probability of B. Actually, 
this is the key equation of all estimation and Bayesian formulas or all uh, the Bayesian inference and many other algorithms. This is called Bayesian formula. So it is very simple, derive, simply derive it from the conditional probability. Of course, we have more, more, this is the basic form, but we have like more general forms for that. Okay, now the probability of A given B equal to probability of B given A times probability of A divided by probability of B. We are going uh, in this part, and maybe the next part actually, because the time is already half an hour now. So in the next part, I am going to explain this in very, very details. And also we, we will see some formula, uh, some examples, some some like, uh, like, like how AI could play Football, for example, uh, that intelligent agent, how could play football based on this in this in this equation? And we see also how uh, intelligent agent could um, like check a car and fix a car based on this equation. OK, this is coming in the next part. But now this is the formula that we used here, as we can as we can see. So this is what we used here. So probability of white, white, given the C, C is that is the drone ball is white equal to probability of C given WW times probability of WW divided by probability of C. So what is the probability that that you will get uh, uh, the drawn ball is white given that both balls are white, it will be one as you can see. And here the uh, probability of being being white white, we already calculate, calculated it is, it is one over four, it is 0.25. And the probability that you will draw like uh, a white ball, it will be 0.5. So the result will be 0.5. So here will be the result. So the, the probability that if you draw one ball and it was white, the probability that the other ball, it can be white or black with the same probability. So it will be 0.5. So I hope that um, uh, by this example, actually, we try just to show to show how how the probability theory could be like the result can be quite different if uh, the uh, based on the presentation. So when you are looking for the probability, you should be precisely think what you are looking for because the result can be different. Okay. Here we have several examples. I totally um, recommend you to read them from the slides. They are very easy to, to, to understand uh, and also practice yourself with these calculations. Okay, this is another example here. And this is the Bayesian theorem, as I mentioned now. So the probability of B given A and the probability of B given A can be given by probability of A given B. So uh, um, let me like um, present this equation. So here is the, what is the probability of event B given that probability, uh, given that another event A has occurred is the same as the probability of A given that B was occurred before. Okay, how B will affect A depends on how B will how A will will affect B. Okay, so I am not I don't want to skip, but uh, I I may say that uh, this probability of A given B could be the uh, um, could be computed by our experience, by our like by database, by by uh, 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 our previous observations of the same problem. We can build this A given B, and then we can use it to how to understand the this impact of B B given A. Okay, so. Um, uh, before I uh, go further, just l l let me, uh, if we present this with the previous example that I gave about the diabetic and uh, the person age. So we said that uh, uh, the person age A was, was um, uh, 80 years old, if you remember. And we said that uh, the probability of anyone to be diabetic in that population, it was 0.01. And now we are interested to see what is the probability of this person specifically that we have selected now P, okay, that to have diabetic, given that his age is 80, 80 years old. This actually will be, if we apply this one, it will be probability of A given B times probability of A 
divided by probability of P. Okay, so now probability of P, we have it. So we have general knowledge about the population in this country. Okay, and, and probability of A given B, what it means? Probability of A given, given B, it means that what is the probability of 80 years old uh, uh, or, or what is the probability that for a, sam for a person that he will be 80 years old given that it, uh, uh, this person was diabetic? This person was diabetic. What is the probability that, that this person is 80 years old? Or it can be, of course, within certain range. We can say right from 80 to 85 if you, if you want some range. But let us take it simple as that one. Okay. What is the probability of A in this case? Probability of A is what is the probability or the percentage in this population that people they have 80 years old. It can be, for example, let's say point. Uh, o2 so it means that um, every 100 person in this country there will be two people that they have 80 years old just I, I give I give just examples now or just numbers so they are not based on anything but just to give numbers so we have probability of a here we have probability of B how to calculate probability of a given B probability of a given B could be computed from the database in the hospital. In, in, or, or in this national health system in this country. So we are looking now, those are diabetic people and those are their ages. So for example, this person is 20 years, this person is uh, 75 years, this, people, this person is 80 years, this person is 85, this person is 30 and so on. So now, we compute those who have diabetic, all these people, they have diabetic. Then we compute uh, the number of those people that who are 80 eight years old. How many they have, eighty? they are 80 years old. So now we compute, we, we count how many of them and we divide over all people that they have diabetic. Okay, so now this number, for example, assume that in the diabetic people that we have in our national record, that we have, let's say, 1,000 person, and out of 1,000, we found that uh, 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 10 of them, they have, uh, or maybe maybe 20 of them, they have diabetic. So in this case, the probability of A given B, because it is only for those who have diabetic, that it will be... 20 divided by 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 thousand it, it, it is just like uh, it, it is called maximum likelihood estimation of this of this population so it will be 20 divided by 1000 so it will be 2% okay 0.02 now you can calculate so it will be 0.02 times 0.01 divided by the probability of p it is 0.01 and probability of a maybe it is 0.02 so you can calculate now what is the probability of P given A. So now we have our belief about this person. So if 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 the intelligent agent, we have intelligent agent, we call them that. Okay, now we have a person that we uh, uh, like randomly selected, and what is what you think about the chance that this person has diabetic? Okay, so this uh, 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 intelligent agent, they will look to the probability. So they will say that the probability is 0.01. Why they said 0.01? Because this is the information given from the national system, but they don't have any information. They don't have any information. Now, if it has a new information, we, we tell this intelligent agent that this person is 80 years old. Then this intelligent agent will apply this equation. And then they find that, okay, now the probability is not 0.01 anymore. It becomes, for example, 0.1. So it, 10 times more the chance that this person has diabetic, is a diabetic. So now, but uh, what do you think that uh, about the exercises? So we tell this machine or this intelligent agent that this person is 80 years old, but he or she like walk every day 10 kilometers. Okay, now this probability can be down. So now... The belief or the uncertainty belief in this uh, 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 um, person will be improved every time or the, uh, the accuracy. It will be improved every time uh, by using more and more information and how to include the information into our previous belief 
uh, our previous observations is is by using this Bayesian Bayes, Bayes theorem. Uh, there's one thing that we should remember that correlated uh, event this doesn't mean that they are causing each other so it is it is important so it is not causality so it means that the observe uh, 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 the, the correlation does not necessarily imply uh, like uh, causality or co or, or, or co uh, causation that that this happens before be because of that there might be some some uh, some general uh, uh, like uh, or reason causes two cases causes two events and those uh, when we apply these equations we can find that those two events are correlated but this does not mean that this event and this event uh, is caused by that event it is not the causality it is not that causes by that event both of them they are correlated yes but not based on each other Okay, so um, uh, there are, of course, different examples about that. So we talk about this in the next clip. So I, I think it is enough, 40 minutes. It is enough for this part. Thank you very much.